Well, Phil, what a great surprise tonight. Yes, I've just walked into the studio and a very dear friend is sitting next to me. Oh, thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you, Bruce, and good to see our special guests. Monday is normally Patty night. That's right. But there's a bonus tonight. And I'm that bonus. My, my name is Albert Watson, Wilberforce, Thomas Joseph, Patrick Belmont, Francis Archibald, Kenneth, Kenneth John, out of wishes, Peter Newton, but you can call me Bill. Did you really, <laughs> did you really have all those names? Bill? Yes, I had a lot of uncles, oh. and I was named after all of them. Yes. No. Uh, good evening, Bruce, by the way. Uh, good evening. <laughs> uh, good hi, evening, Philip. Hi, champ. It's Happy uh, New you. Year to you. Yeah. It's, well, it's wonderful to be here with uh, two of the people I love. Up most of all, and uh, and Thank Philip you. too. Oh, uh, lovely! <laughs> it's great to be anywhere at this stage of my life. Mm. Of course, yes. of course, of course. What are you doing with yourself? Are there any shows on the horizon for you? Uh, possibly in a couple of months' time. But uh, as we say in the industry, and we've all been uh, in this particular spot before, uh, I'm between engagements. But uh, this is a gig I'm looking forward to, doing an hour here uh, yes. this evening. I assume the money will be reasonably good. And there's nothing like actually just, you know, sitting in the car park for 45 minutes waiting to get See, into the building. It's funny because I mm. love to be early and Bert... Always, wherever he goes, he just gets there. If you've got to be somewhere at half past one, he leaves at one o'clock and gets there, walk, drives in the thing, sits down, opens the door, and he's there at one thirty. Well, I'm like you. I could be one and a half hour, two I mean, hours that's early. Me. That's me. I'll fill in time, read the paper, coffee. See, I always leave home an hour early, and I know I'm going to be early, but I'll sit in the in the car park yeah, and listen to the radio and have a read or something. And I believe Philip uh, is quite good in that area too. I know, I think there's been at least one occasion in which he's been in at five minutes to eight. Oh, no, no, never. No, <laughs> no. no. What, what, what time is it, Philip? Two minutes to eight? No, tonight I walked in during the theme, which yes. I think is very professional, don't of you? Of course. That's what of course. Dean Martin would do. It was quite dramatic down the car park, that beautiful yellow Mercedes. What a mess it is. So I don't oh, know. what happened, Bert? Well, there's a major accident down oh, there. Oh, I'll check it out. Yeah. <laughs> How come <laughs> you're driving a Mercedes? No, 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 it's only a Ford XR6, oh, and it's it? 15 years old. I thought you drove a Mercedes at some stage. I used to. Time, when I, did, didn't yes, you? when I was in television and affluent, what I a did. royal blue Mercedes? Uh, yes, it? it was, until I had it sprayed a different colour. That's right. Yes. Did you really? Why'd you have it sprayed? Oh, for, for anonymity. Everybody said that's Philip's car. Really? Oh, okay. So so what? Oh well, you know, I just didn't want people scratching that? with coins, and you know what? Uh, do you have personalised number plates? I'd never do that, would you? Because then you're a target, don't you think? No, I don't have personal number plates. Uh, Patty does. Look for her car. It's P A T T I three nine seven. It's a beautiful yeah. white, and it's usually oh, parked not. outside the Beehive Hotel no, in Hawthorne. Do you know something? I do have personalised number plates, but they're not mine. Okay. Um. And Bert very, She's a car thief. <laughs> yeah. uh. Bert very kindly many years ago wanted a surprise present, and my dad had an old Pontiac years and years and years ago, and as a little girl I always remembered his his number his number plate, as I remembered you know our address our phone number yes. and Dad's number plate. Yes, of course. And I used to rattle them off, and I can remember saying to Bert, "Oh." You know, I remember Dad's car and I rattled the number off and he remembered it. So he went and looked for my Dad's number plates, which, you know, you're talking about the 40s, I suppose. Yes, yes. And, um, and he found them and they weren't being used. So he got them for me and I've had them ever since. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, mm. it's a lovely... To a lovely... search that treasure out. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's just nice well, to have something of his. That's the sort of bloke I am. Well, you, you are. Know what I mean? You are. Yes. No, it's thoughtful, though. Oh, I very think much. those sort of prezies are sort of nicer than, you know, the... 
perhaps the four and a half, or oh no, seven and a half million dollar diamond ring, ring that uh, yes. Kerry the, has just given Mariah. Yes. It's the sort of thing you can be in conversation with a friend and say, do you know, I started my career at 3XY <laughs> and there's one thing that you've got which I would absolutely adore, the, the chimes. And, uh, you know, you go into a dissertation about why it would be important to you and the person you're... Have you, have you still got the chimes? by the way. Yes, and the microphone you used. Oh, there you go. Yes, yes. Yes, you've never considered perhaps that it might be a lovely... Well, I'd love to give it to you. I really would. <laughs> one, one of those days. How long will I wait? Uh, 3XY, we, we, it was scratched on the side of it. Oh, yes? And it would go back to the 40s, Phil. Uh, very much so, yes. Most stations had had gongs. Yeah, yeah. Well, well we're talking about microphones now. <laughs> there was a lovely story, a friend of mine who worked at 3XY at the same time as myself, and talking about chimes. He got a job at the ABC. Actually, he was, I think he was fired from 3XY for, I don't know, turning up suddenly drunk or something. And he uh, got a job at the ABC. This is going back to the uh, the 50s. And I saw him about three months after uh, his, you know, he, he'd started there. And I said, what's the difference between commercial radio and, uh, and the ABC? And he said, you hit the chimes slower. <laughs> oh, and when you think beautiful. about it, you know, the oh, ABC yeah. back in those days was always boom, yes. boom, yes. boom. Yes, yes. yes. Where three UZ was nice to come home to. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Three UZ. And in country stations, of course, uh, the gongs would. Uh, announce funerals uh, That's right. that were happening that day, wouldn't they? Yeah. Through solemn gongs. Lots of memories, actually. Paddy and I used to go to Albury a hell of a lot, and uh, 2AY is the local station there. Do you go to 2AY? Yes, we do, oh, yes. yes. Right. Hello, 2AY. Yeah, hello, 2AY. And back in, in those years, and we're talking about the late 60s, early 70s, uh, I knew the manager of the station, and we had a drink together one day, and he said, we're trying a new format as of next Monday. Day. Uh, he said, we're trying to liven it up. He said, to be honest with you, a lot, a lot of the announcers are now, you know, in their 50s and 60s, and we just need to get a younger look, if it's possible. And we've got a new bloke starting in breakfast session on Monday. We'll call him Biddle Smith. Mm. Uh, he said, you know, and I think he'll be terrific, but have a listen to the bloke he's taking over from. You'll love him for an obvious reason when you listen. So I listened on the Friday, and this bloke, I, I'm sure he must have been about 70 or my age, now it's 77 or something and he played a record and out of the record he said and there you go folks there it was a hey jude sung by bing crosby and made famous of course by the beetle brothers <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, he was trying to sound modern yes. oh, that, isn't that funny yes. oh, isn't that one classic i it? think you miss things a bit like the chimes and the themes and all of that though yes. and, and the singing commercials uh, do you remember patty the first time we went to albury friends about um, owned the, the motel there. Separate rooms, by the way. Oh, we weren't very married much at all. So. Of course. Uh, and we, we tuned on for the news at six o'clock, and the bloke who came on had lovely black, wavy hair, but with a penciled moustache on. And I thought, how unusual. You know, I mean, it's, it's fine to grow a moustache, but why would you pencil one on? <laughs> and I, the next day, I caught up with uh, this gentleman friend of mine who was the manager of the station, who also did some work on television. And what we discovered was that bloke also compared the children's program. He was Uncle Ted or something. And as Uncle Ted, he wore a wig and a little penciled on moustache. And on this particular night, he forgot to remove the moustache. Oh! But it was so about strange. Oh, isn't that marvelous? Oh, that's oh. Thousands of them. No, my favourite was what was this, the studio that we'd go to? And was that Ballarat? No, I, you, you'll remember. Channel 6 in Ballarat. Yes, yep. and you'd go there, you'd meet this gentleman, he would greet you, he'd then take you into the makeup area, he'd then stand and he'd say, What colour makeup? 
kind of the sets film. He did, yeah. I believe, he was in props as and well. And Gary Rice, who became uh, managing director of Channel 9, Channel 7, and uh, Channel 7, and uh, Channel 10, he played in the orchestra. He did too. Yeah. Yes, but, he did. You know, times have changed. Channel 9 News, I believe, is soon to go automated cameras as they have at BBC and CNN, and they'll have no camera crew on the floor at all. Wow. Yeah. You know, it'll all be looking all into a remote camera. Off. Yes, yeah. but there'll be no atmosphere, will there, Bert? It's a terrifying feeling, actually. When I first auditioned to go to Channel 7 back in 1956, uh, the camera was locked off and there was just me sitting in the studio. Yes. And this voice from the control room said, you know, read an item, if you will, please, Bill. And I said, my name's Bert. Mm. <laughs> and I read the news item, then I read a commercial. And then he said, just explain how your day's been so far. Oh, good. So I ah. went through and I went for over 45 minutes. Goodness me. And what I didn't Before know... Before he stopped you. <laughs> no one stopped me. I just got up and oh. left the studio, got the tram home, and, oh. you know, Mum said, how did you go? I said, well, I don't know. I didn't, <laughs> didn't see anyone. Mm. And months later, when I joined Channel 7, the producer of the show I was doing, Doug McKenzie, said, you know, I was one of the people who was sitting in the control room with the, the program manager, great bloke called Colin Fraser. He said, We've never told you this, but what happened? He said that a fire broke out in Talisini, and we both went to Talisini to make sure everything was okay. And Colin Fraser said, Would you like to have a beer in the office? I forgot about he said, you. And we had a beer, and one said to the other, What did you think of that kid from 3XY? And I said, God, he could still be there. We've got oh. all that. He's still going. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that funny? Oh, that's Is classic. Peter Hitchner coming in tonight? Uh, no, not I believe tonight. not. No, oh, not tonight. Okay. We, we talked about his birthday. When was his birthday? Last Is it week, over? Last yeah. week, Pappy. Yeah. Uh, no, I think, I, I think no it's coming. No. It's in February and he'll yeah, be 70. He's 70 years of age. He's a good he looks, he looks oh, marvellous. We were saying driving in, because I said to Bert, I said, you know, he looks so much like you. He could be a brother. Oh, he could or be. he could be one of your children. Very much so. And I said, but then we worked out he was going to be 70, mm. would mean that Bert would have had him when he was seven. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But he is, doesn't he look good? He looks fabulous. That is, I mean, he is a great snow, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, oh, Do yes. It. You oh. know, Steve Price and Sam Newman earlier tonight on this network were talking about retirement age, and it seemed to be a cut-off point of 70 that they were discussing. Uh, but, you know, I'm the exception to the rule. I plan to keep working till I drop. I'm here six nights a week with Bruce till midnight. Yeah, but that's what you think. Well, do you think management have other plans? I think they have. <laughs> Sorry, buddy, I've just signed a five-year contract. No Sorry, such buddy. No such thing. No, they don't want you to know I've about it. I've just realised now we've got... In years, there's the 230 is? years sitting oh, in the oh, studio. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. oh, look who's just walked in, Norman Banks. Oh. Norman, how are you? Oh, I, I reached my prime, you, you fellow 70, 75 years of age. I'm now 85, 90. Goodness me. Uh, would you like a cake, by the, by the way? <laughs> no, I'll have one of those, uh, that, that, uh, that sponge with oh, the okay. star well, on the side. And I'll yeah. see you outside. Indeed, we will, Bert, no. outside your Hoyt Suburban Theatre. Oh, well done. Norman. <laughs> Do you know Pete Smith's father is still playing golf at 100? Which I is a know. wonderful it's achievement, score, isn't, isn't it? it? And now still listen, cracking jokes. Tonight on the program, we're giving a double return trip uh, to any Tiger Air destination, Phil. Yeah, including the Whitsunday Islands and Darwin and Perth. Uh, flying from the new Terminal 4 at Melbourne International Airport. Yes, and you'll hear the song a couple of times tonight. Lulu singing, I am a Tiger. And you choose your destination anywhere in Australia, but the major prize is off to Bali for the whole family. Yes, it'll be a week in Bali at the Mercure Legion Hotel, and you'll be uh, flying with Tiger Air. Here's a song to listen to twice later in the... So if you're if you're on air with us and you hear that song, you're automatically going to a, a wonderful destination thanks to Tiger Air. As are ten of our listeners from last week and ten more to come this week. We Did you hear the news tonight? That's why I was wondering whether... Um, um, 
I just love the way you pop in. I know. Well, <laughs> oh, she's gorgeous. Oh, that's exactly um, Patty. I was wondering whether Peter was coming in because there was a story about Molly, Molly yes, Meldrum, who's right. in Thailand. Had a fall. Yeah, mm. had another fall. Had so I hope attachment. he's okay. Yes, I believe he is. Yeah. Doing well. Yeah, he looked all right when yeah. when you saw him. I think the reason he's in Bangkok is to to escape all of I the know. promo for oh. his mini series. Well, he is. He's he's away from it. Well, we saw him. Absolute overindulgence with that promo. Well, we saw him recently, and um, we were talking about it, and I said, How's, how do you feel about the miniseries? And he said, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. He said, I'm going away. I don't want to be here when it happens. No. And I want to be away after it's over because mm. I don't want to talk about it. I'm sick to mm. death of it. Yeah, no. but... I, seeing the promos and things, it looks fabulous. But I isn't must the say. boy who's taking his role wonderful? Yes, he is Ap Samuel. He's Samuel Ap Johnson. Mm, he looks fabulous. He's uh, uh, when he first was chosen, I thought I don't know whether he can mm. look like Molly, yes. but for some reason he's let his hair grow and went with the hat on, yep. he actually looks you like You know, him. it looks so very deceptive. Prior to Sunset Boulevard, I said to Deborah Byrne, you are wrong for the part of Norma Desmond, and I loved Deborah, but I said, you're too young, you're too immature, you haven't lived, and you know, they need someone like Glenn Close or Julia Clark. Well, I had to eat my words because I thought she was just fantastic. She well, was. you can be wrong, you know, many years ago, um, a kid finished his schooling on a Friday, and by Monday he was on television and I thought at the time oh he's far too young you know I mean I, I think it was Xavier that he was at on the <laughs> Friday and then all of a sudden on Monday he popped up doing a commercial for a vacuum cleaner or something and I thought he'll never make it I was right <laughs> 26 past 10 with Bert and Patty, a, a bonus, Phil. Oh, it's very nice to be here. Yeah, that, have you folks been away at all through January? Well, with the grandkids, we've been everywhere. Yes. We went to a movie the other day. Um, we took... Uh, all the grandchildren to Goosebumps. Oh, they'd love it. They did. Well, it was a bit scary, ah, a yes. bit spooky for for the three-year-old. So I put my hands over my her eyes and kept giving her a little look, and yes. she, she kept turning around and saying, "You don't have to be scared, Nan. It's not real. It's oh, just pretend." It's a glorious thing. <laughs> yeah. So, but. Uh, I was very impressed with Bert taking young Sam to the Illusionists. Ah, oh, tell would have been them about the Illusionists. He loved it too, and I absolutely adored it. It was a great show. I wish we'd seen it earlier because I would have taken him back again to see it. I would have recommended uh, the the show to anyone I spoke to. And fortunately, I think you would have loved it, Bruce. Yeah, yeah I would. The show it's your that, grandkids. The yes. show we saw was the one on the Saturday, and then on the on the Sunday that was goodbye time. They did their last show then, but. It was for all ages, it was clean, it was hilarious. There was one comedian magician on it, whose name I, I can't remember now, but he's one of the funniest men I have ever seen. I would put him at, at the top of my list. Goodness me. He was just wonderful. He did magic, but got it all wrong, uh, and had some just some lovely lines. It was Very it was dry, terrific. wasn't he? Very dry, a good-looking bloke, and his time was just uh, impeccable. Wonderful. Wasn't Wonderful. he good the way he handled the members of the audience after interval when they came up on stage. Did you see it? Yes, did yes I, I did. I did go and I loved it. Yeah. Mm. You know, it was very underrated. It and should he still be playing. He had the bird oh, and kept saying, it's a bird. It's a bird. Know, yeah. But weren't the illusions yeah. fantastic? Yeah, wonderful you know. stuff. We've got mm. someone special to say hello to you, Bert, from, uh, from all of our past. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Come on. What... The... Give us some more. Freely be at three old K, the Herald Sun stations. It's news time at N28. Oh, well, there you go. Who is it? Well, we'll try this one. We uh, found them on eBay, actually. All oh, right. Guess what I've got at home? I've uh, got... You've got um, the free AW chimes? No, I've got the original 3UZ chimes, those, uh, the red-cased ones. Oh, yes. John yes, McMahon gave them to me many years ago, and uh, Bruce has not forgiven me <laughs> for having them. <laughs> uh, lovely to talk to you, John. Thank you for calling in. That's lovely, lovely of you. Both and, uh, oh, gee, it's, it's just so nice to hear you both again. And please, John, just finish off by saying correct weight at Caulfield. Mm -hmm. 
have a white is right at Caulfield. There's a protest in Sydney. Uh, Brisbane has been cancelled because of heavy rain. And Perth, well, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> well done, Good John. Good for you. Wonderful. I, uh, we'll, we'll see you at the Survivors Lounge, which you were a founding member of, Bert, all those years ago. Well, I was more than, more than the founding member. I was the only founder yes. of, uh, of the Survivors Club. It, it it's always a little iffy, isn't it, when, when it starts and who started it and who was the members and all of that. But it, it was you, wasn't it, Bert? It was, uh, I'm proud to say, and it was, it was wonderful. We, the criteria we had was that it, it, the members needed to have been in radio 20 years prior to you know, starting the club and also needed to work in Melbourne radio. Mm -hmm. And it was wonderful to see these older gentlemen. Well, at that stage, I would have been about 40, I suppose, or 39, 40. But I would imagine that the average age of the people who were there would be, you know, would be closer to 70 or 75. And it was great seeing them get together after having worked in the same industry so many years yes. prior. Norman Banks yes. uh, used to come to the... Johnny McMahon was, uh, was there. Uh, Kevin O'Gorman mm. from 3KZ. A whole range of people. The difference between that particular Survivors Club and the one which, you know, continues today is I was foolish enough to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> you shattered everybody. Well, I did, not to make a big man of myself, oh. but to be honest with yes, you... Yes, that's why I keep handing my hat around. Yes, <laughs> yes. To be honest with you, oh. I, I was so keen to oh. to see those um, those veterans of radio yeah. get together regularly. And you used to have a lovely lunch at, at the Latin, wasn't it? Was the it Latin, the Latin? Upstairs at the, uh, was at that the Latin. A, you took me to one, was that a Mario's, perhaps? Is uh, that the same place? No, no, no. Uh, the, the Latin was in Lonsdale Street. Oh, was that... Run by the Triarchas. Yes, it Dante was. Dante Triarchas. Yes. That's right, it That's was. It. Yep. Yes. Indeed. They uh, they used to, you know, look after us beautifully upstairs and mm. they could order whatever you wanted. And I think, in fairness, rather than you think that I, you know, was throwing money everywhere, they gave us a very good deal. Yeah. They did, and it was... But you had people like Joff and... Joff Norm, Allen, Norm Spencer. Yeah. whole and, range of people. Jeff Cork. Uh, and, uh, people like Ron Tudor and John Proper. Yeah, John Proper came in toward the end uh -huh. because I was working with him on New Faces. Yes. He was, uh, uh, he was the producer of New Faces, and I needed someone to do all the groundwork for me, to mm -hmm. contact the people. And I have at home... And it was at my mum's, and, and I was sort of getting rid of a lot of things just recently, and I found the big plaque that Bert had made. It's a big wooden plaque, and it has, it ha yeah, and it has the names mm. on it. Uh, I should give it to you, Philip, to give to the... To the, yes, the people. I, I go twice a year, as does John Burdick, and then about 60 people turn up now, including women, which is uh, quite a, an but achievement. It would be quite nice for you to have the original... To take and present. What do you call it? Not a plaque. An honour board. An honour board, board. Yes. Oh, how lovely. And there was an award given uh, at each luncheon, and that became, on his death, that became the Norman Banks oh, Award. Oh, how wonderful. And uh, the person who received the award would stand and talk about his, oh, uh, his yeah. career lovely. and so forth. Yeah. And I often wonder why, when I hear you guys on radio, why I didn't invite you. Uh, there'd have to be a, a good... Maybe because you were currently yes, on the radio. You were probably too young. You know. Yes. At the time, yes. you were probably too and, young. And I hadn't done much radio in those days, as you know. Well, you're one of those unusual creatures because you started in television before radio. Absolutely. I'm the exception to the rule. Yeah, exactly. I've always felt a bit like an, an alien, like I don't belong. Oh, well, you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 35 to 11. <laughs> Licence number 5735970. Exactly. <laughs> LMCT. <laughs> That's Ian Reid. Very helpful voice. He used voice. to sponsor me, didn't he? Yes, he, he did. Was, he, when, he used to, mm -hmm. when uh, I was on regularly, oh. his little... He, oh, she's here with the compliments of Ian Reid. Oh, did you hear lovely. that? Mm. When I was on regularly. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I heard Oh, there that. you go. No, that's all right. Uh, do you know what? I didn't realise I'd miss you two so much. Mm -hmm. 
but well, but was we concerned. miss you. Okay, why don't the four of us have a coffee every Monday uh, outside Short Black in Burke Hello, Road? Thank you. Oh, no, no, thank you. No, thank you. And we could get to know each other. No, better. I, I don't wanted... want to get to know you. Swap stories. <laughs> no. Well, I don't want to do that because I do know you. Yeah. And I've, yeah. I've known you very, very well. No, and to be you. honest, you only want to do that because it's outside and you can have a little puff. No, this is wonderful, Ray. Where else could you hear four people speaking over each other? That's this right, exactly, and loathing each other. <laughs> do you uh, John know what? Vertigan, uh, John Vertigan, if you're still listening, I wonder if you could do me a favour. When John left 3UZ, he was a very popular guy with the staff at 3UZ, and we gave him an on-air farewell in the auditorium. I haven't got a copy of it. I'm wondering if John kept one. I would adore to uh, to have it. So there you go, John. If you haven't switched elsewhere, uh, that's an opportunity mm. for you to thank me for oh. giving you a job at DB. Yeah. Very good. And, and, of course, his son has followed in his footsteps. John Verdigan Jr. Yes, he'd be very proud of that. Yeah. Yeah. I hope my daughter Lauren is listening uh, at this very moment. We had a moment uh, together. The, when was it? Yesterday? Or this morning? No, early this morning. When it, um, I mentioned that I might be doing uh, this little program with you guys. <laughs> And uh, and Patty said, yes, the boys would love you to come in. And I said, oh, OK. I said, but the tennis is on tonight, isn't it? Uh, yes. Oh, look, I'd rather wait until the tennis is over, you know, uh -huh. bigger audience. And oh. Lauren said, Dad, don't be big deal. Yeah. And <laughs> the one thing I loathe is any. I was she was I'm serious too. Well, what oh, was. don't be so big deal, Dad. The boys would love to see of you going. Hey, you yes. could have come in on a night when we're digital, and we wouldn't have had so many listeners as tonight. Do oh, you know? There you go. Okay. Does Australia Day mean anything for you? It's very important for Bert and I. Many years ago, um, I was working on the QE2. And um, and had been on the QE2 for quite a while, and as a surprise, Bert arrived in New York and got on board, oh. unbeknownst to any of us. Gee. And we were going doing a little cruise to the Caribbean, and we worked on the first night out, and Bert was there, well, not unbeknownst to us. And then at the end of it, I got this little note saying, "Chewy, we on your boot." Yes, love Bert. And I thought, that's strange, and looked around, and there he was, coming out of the toilet, oh. fixing his hair, and there was a, a, a beer and a packet of Alpine cigarettes, and I knew that's where he's sitting. Yes. So, anyway, on Australia Day, we decided to get married, Bird asked me, and, um, well, I had to coax him into asking me, but anyway, he did eventually ask me. And we had a big party on the ship for yes. the Australians and all the other entertainers. And it was only Bert and I and the girls I was working with, Carolyn and Donna, um, that knew that it was actually our engagement oh, celebration. Wonderful. So Eve, we were engaged on Australia Day. And, oh. and Patty's English boyfriend didn't know anything about <laughs> oh, it. Oh, no. no! He found out the next day. No, do you know... I'll do give you, you his name, you, Kevin Kent. No, do you want to know the real story? He actually decided to come on the QE2 for a little trip because I think he might have had an engagement ring for me. Uh, and he was, I uh, knew he was meeting me at the New York dock. Hmm. And I thought, Bert's on board. Oh. Kevin's going to be at the other end. And what will I do? And in the meantime, Bert asked me to marry him, and I jumped at it. So I had to quickly get a message through to Kevin. Two people. Don't come. No. Don't hang come. On, hang on. Hang on one sec. <laughs> Lauren, if you're listening, that is big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Have Frankston. Uh, let's have a quick look at the Herald Sun for tomorrow. Kate McMahon, good evening. Good evening, guys. Tomorrow's Herald Sun. We celebrate Australia Day and all the fantastic men and women who make our nation great. We've got some very special Victorians honoured and we um, look at all 813 recipients as well as our Australian of the Year, David Morrison, who gave a great speech tonight, by the way. And we also have all the details on where you can celebrate tomorrow and some great food ideas in our Lift Out Taste. Oh, oh, great. Look Lots forward to that, Kate. For That's good. That's excellent. Thank you, Kate, very much. A golden retriever cocking his leg. Oh, you'll get that. Over, over my tombstone. Something symbolic because, Bert, I love animals, as you know.
Certainly, I know you do. Uh, what have you got to have, actually, on the stone itself? Remember me. I'm the one who loves yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> no, something like, hi folks, good to know you. Oh, something okay. I'm being a homespun like Will Rogers. I'm going to put a Logie on top of Bert's. Yeah? I'm just going to have on mine, actually, if I, if, if I have a choice. See, I told you I was sick. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. That's coming. Did we give them enough... Air time, Cameo Memorials, um, around since 1874, <laughs> opposite the Faulkner Cemetery, so you can kill two birds with one well, stone. Well, they're in Sydney Road, as you know. Yeah, so therefore you can go... Very to, close to the, the cemetery, aren't go they? Go from one place to the other. Oh, yes, well, yes. Get yes. it done they quickly. Are. Right yeah. opposite. Mm. Yeah, it's like a two-for-one, a two for one, isn't it? My name is out there and at Faulkner, and I think, you know, we've been we've used Cameo for yes. oh, you would her stone. Most people do. Mm. They've been around, as I said, since 1874. Yeah. Since Cobb and Mm. Fabulous. Yeah. Since Cobb and Co. Oh, yeah, and, and the Gold Rush and, oh. and Bush Rangers and oh, before Ned that. Kelly. Mm. Oh, the exciting things you learn. Now, listen, Paddy, what do you think of the engagement of uh, Kerry and Mariah? Well, look, if they're happy and they're, uh, you know, if, if they can. I mean, if anyone is going to be able to um, look after you the way in the manner you're accustomed to, Kerry would be the one to do it. I would say so, it. yes. Or yes. James, I mean. Mm. Yeah. Or Did not, I say not, Kerry? Not Kerry. No, Kerry. Well, no, in lieu of, though, yeah, of James would be able uh, for to. For both of them, it's a third marriage, isn't it? It is, yes. Mm -hmm. And there are children involved. Yes. But, um, and they're around about the same age, I think. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I actually loved Erica. I thought she was pretty, yes, she was gorgeous. pretty gorgeous. Yeah. But she's going with Seal now. How is she? Mm, oh. So, I know all the goss. Anything oh. else you want to know? <laughs> what about tonight in one of the magazines, which I think was really strange, they had a, a big article on Australia's Got Talent, mm. which is coming up soon. And um, the judges are Callie Osborne, yeah. um, Sophie Monk, um, Dicko, yes. and Eddie Perfect. And Kelly and Eddie Perfect, they're saying in this story, are doing more than holding hands, which I think is a bit, it's a bit cruel, don't you? It is a bit cruel. Why do that? Well, they obviously have a great rapport and they have great chemistry on camera together. Yeah. But I think he has a partner with a couple of children and yes, I think yeah. that's wrong. But they're breaking people up and, they do. and forging to people together. Oh, my goodness. Beck is on the cover of both magazines oh. and in one she's pregnant and the other she's not oh, so there no. you go well there you can take your choice well, yes of course <laughs> yeah. yes ah. i must say our daughter is um getting close she's only got a few weeks to go yes, before yes. she has her fourth baby oh, beautiful. um so we're that's why we haven't really done much over the break, isn't it? It is. And also, I think it should be known that, that basically after being married, what, for 41 years? 42 <clears> years. 42 years. I think it's best, you know, considering that gossip is the thing today, that Patty and I uh, now share uh, separate beds. <laughs> Uh, oh, hers is in Brighton, mine's in Footscray. Yeah. <laughs> so much oh fun. no! I wish because Bert's a bit of a snorer, but he's he's mm. cured that, so he's okay now. What so. does he use? Sleep apnea? Oh no! I, oh. Yes, I think I think I'll. Um, I better not tell you what he does, but he hasn't been snoring much. I think I it's because I keep kicking him. I, I do. I wear a mask. <laughs> yes, no, yes. he does, mm. and it's really worked. I have a, a a cousin, a lovely friend, who and you. I talk about her all the time, Judy Moody, yes. Judy Jolly, and yes. her, her husband was having a bit of it. And I talked him into having a look at Bert's mask, and now he wears one, and he's not snoring. Right. So, you know, if it gives, you, if the, gives oh. the wife a bit of a peace of mind, of course. you told me... Jill snores. Oh. Maybe you need to get one for her. She was like a lumberjack. She oh. blew me out of, out of oh, bed. Don't. No, she did. Yeah. Well, I've got to say, isn't that a wonderful transition, Judy, with uh, you know the, the cousin of Patty? She was uh, Judy Moody, and she became Judy Jolly, which I think is. Yes, oh, yes. Ah, she's ah, married to Jolly. Sure. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Jeff Jolly. Thought, yeah. thought I'd throw that in. Yeah, no, it's very. Uh, well, good. well, Bruce has a problem. He sleepwalks. A Do big you? problem when he's I, on a cruise ship. Yes, I have. Yes. And. and and I fell out of bed the other night in my dreams and woke up on the floor and pulled the clock radio and the bed lamp down on top of me. Oh, no. Do you and know what Bert does? He talks. 
Yes. Oh, is but he, he actually has a conversation. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yep. And he's always doing a show. And he always goes, no, oh, okay, I'll be there. Come on, I have to go. I'm on now. Oh. And he, oh. I love it. Yeah, I've I have been a known, bit of a listen. I've been known to shout out, here's Moira. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, I was telling Bruce and Phil about um, that movie we saw, Joy, and uh, how much oh, we enjoyed it because yeah, it was excellent. about the adver advertorials, wasn't mm, it? You'd, you'd love, love it. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah we enjoyed it. You should movie. have a look at it. I think it. you'd like oh, it. Yes. And by the way, you must regret that you didn't go to Africa to do the new Mad Max movie. It's up for so many Academy Awards, and you might have been up for one yourself. Well, I wouldn't think so, Phil, but it, 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 it was a disappointment. But, I mean, health-wise. It I understand just, uh, why, Bert. Yes, I know. I, I was hospitalised when I got the call from uh, George Miller mm. to say that, you know, it wouldn't be... Originally, it was going to be done in Australia. Broken Hill, I think. In Broken Hill. And they had a, a green season, they had a rainy yeah. season, yeah. and they wanted absolute desert. Uh, so that couldn't work out, and they finished up going to, uh, to West Africa. But I, I spoke to one of the people who worked on the crew, and they said... It was a terrific time there, but it was Grueling. really hard. Really, yeah. 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 absolutely. Yeah. So and it, and apparently the weather there is unbelievable. It's mm. when it's hot, it's absolutely stifling, yeah. like you know, unbreathable type weather. Yeah. And then when it gets cold, it's absolutely freezing. Which it is in the desert mm. after that. So it's, no good. Yeah, no, no good, good at all. Say what a treat it's been, Phil, for the last hour. Yes, any time Bert and Patty have been in in the past, which has happened infrequently, but it's always a magical experience for all of us. Because as friends, we go back a lifetime, don't we? All we do. four of us. We go back There's a, a long lot way. of respect, uh, dignity uh, between us, uh, oh, caring is, and is, sharing. Is there, there? No, I don't think so. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I think once a year is you know, quite enough. I, I think it's enough, yeah. yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, I think it's too much. Anyway, thank you, whoever you are. Oh, no. thank you. No, thank you, for, thank you for my spot, and it was lovely that you made Bert so welcome. And so love to the family, darling. Thank you do. so much. And I'm going to see you on Saturday. Of course, for the mm -hmm. birthday party. I will. Look forward to that. And sometime soon, I want to take you all to Subway for a sandwich. No, all thank right. you. No, oh, please. Subway uh, sandwich and the malted milk. What second prize? It's my treat, folks. That's no. how I feel about you. No, thanks. Mm. Well, Bert always used to take everyone to, um, what was the, the Nut, Hilton? The Nutcracker. The yes. Clevedon Room. The Clevedon Room. Let's go there. We've had some good times there. <laughs> the Nutcracker, Bruce and I particularly oh, remember. very well That was my 30th birthday. Yeah. birthday. Yes, it was. Too. My 30th. And he did it like a this is your life and invited everyone yes. that I'd worked with I remember over that. the years. It was, it was a great life. night. You weren't well coming home. And you weren't either. You had to stop the car. <laughs> you were following me. <laughs> Thank you, Bert. Thank you, Patty. Goodbye, now. Thank you, guys. Happy Bye. Australia Day, everyone. Goodbye. Scotty Williams is there. Good evening, Scott. Evening, Bruce and Bill. Uh, yes, hi. Not a bad day today. Tell us about it. Got a bit of sunshine after a cloudy start this morning, and uh, today's top 21 degrees. Five degrees below our January average, so it was on all sides. Uh, the winds are from the south and they'll turn more to the east tomorrow, so uh, we will see conditions warm up uh, quite a, a bit, particularly in the afternoon. Uh, in the morning, there's still a chance of a shower in southern or western suburbs, but I think that'll be gone by about lunchtime. And uh, we'll get sunny periods again in the afternoon. Okay. What's, degrees. what's the overnight low looking like? Well, 16 overnight. We're currently 19, so it won't go down much more. 28, the top temperature tomorrow afternoon. So uh, quite a, a warm Australia day here. There will be uh, fairly windy conditions on the coast. We have got strong wind warning out for the bay. That wind will peak in the sort of late afternoon, evening. So it will be pretty windy. OK, but a, a good day overall for the parade. What about midweek, please, Scott? Well, midweek or Wednesday becomes more unsettled. There's a, a, a low-pressure trough that dips down into Victoria from the north and a lot of humidity coming down our way. So we'll see showers and the risk of thunderstorms, particularly in the afternoon of Wednesday, 18 to 27, the temperature range. On Thursday, that trough will still be lingering around us, so more showers, chance of a thunderstorm, and uh, back to 23. And then it looks like we'll wind up a low-pressure system in our part of the world on Friday. So 
So a sort of wettish end of the week with uh, more showers and uh, probably not the thunder, but certainly showers both Friday and Saturday. Temperatures coming right back, only 19 Friday, 21 on uh, Saturday, and then recovering should be clearing and back to 25 on Sunday. So yeah, no hot weather in there. 28 tomorrow is about as good as it gets. OK, a low of 16 degrees, a warm day tomorrow, top of 28 degrees. Yep. OK, thank you, Scotty. Uh, eight minutes past eleven. Thank you, Bert and Patty, for a wonderful hour. It wasn't terrific, uh, so spontaneous, so unexpected, and aren't they great fun? Uh, they are wonderfully, wonderfully entertaining. Freely Wagaradic, 2Q and Deniliquin, good evening to you. And friends tuned in to us around the world, watching us or hearing us on the internet. Hi to you Let's too. go to Denise at the South Coast. Yes, Denise? Oh, good evening, Bruce and Philip. Hello again, Denise. I was Denise. trying to catch you when Patty and Bert was in because I've always wondered what happened to Alan Lappin. He used to do the top 40 in the early 70s. And he used to call him Lap Lap, you know. Do you remember anything oh, about him? Oh, yes. I think he passed away, didn't he? Oh, he's been dead 20 years or more, Denise. Yes. Has he? And yes. look, he used to do a very good top 40. He did. And I just thought that they might have, you know, followed him on or something. They might have actually heard of him or something. Yeah. Anyway, it's my mother's, would, would have been my mother's birthday yes. today. Yeah, yeah. She was born in Australia Day in Scotland, though. Oh, great. How yeah, wonderful. Born, and born in 1911. And my twins, Robert and Ruby Murphy. Yes. Robert, yeah, Robert McKissick Murphy and Ruby McKissick Murphy. Okay. 13 great. children. Fabulous. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Denise. We've got okay. two Tiger Air winners this hour. Yes, yeah, stay tuned, folks. You might be lucky. When you hear that, uh, that song, I'm a tiger, I'm a tiger. Yeah. Yes, then you're on your way interstate with Tiger Airlines and maybe going to Bali. Chris, good evening. Hello, Bruce and Phil. How are Hi. you? Hi, Chris. Look, I'm, I'm starting to get concerned about the lack of time, uh, access time to Talkback Radio on Freo W. Surely it must be suffering now with all those systematic changes. Um, it's getting very difficult. Getting, sometimes I bring up Tom Elliott's... Uh, show and only 10 minutes after the program is done the lady goes oh we haven't got enough time to get you on or she says to me oh yeah that's a good idea you will pass it on thanks for the call and hangs up on me uh, now i must say because you're always complaining about what happens in other programs we are not responsible for that i've told you many times you are welcome on nightline often as you come across uh, every night if you choose yeah, but what I did make a statement, and, and, and Alan Pearce, I know he's changed his mentality. He's no longer a Labor supporter. He's no longer a Hawthorne supporter and all that. All that. Obviously, you have been directed to coordinate in a certain way because if people thought I was a very good character for 20 years with Keith McGowan, and Keith McGowan was a professional, I was a, just a regular caller and a, a bit of a mate with him just on air, not off air. And if they thought that was really welcoming for all those years, but I can't do similar things now, well, that means he's, he's not only having to go at me, he's having to go at Keith McGowan. But you do them every night of the week, Chris. Let's be quite honest. No, you do, no. You, no yeah, you but do, but do, you're yeah. very staunch, Bruce. No, but you do it as much with us as you do with Keith McGowan every night. Yeah, but Keith McGowan was such a lovely guy, and he was. I, I followed him in the same way. I said, I'm never guilty of saying the right and responsible things. I just say the things the way they actually are. Yeah, and continue to do so on Nightline, but, uh, and, and don't tell me that uh, the station have told Alan Pearsall to change his tune. That's not true, Chris. Well, he was a Labor supporter and he was a Hawthorne supporter. Now he says he doesn't vote for anyone and he says he's a Liberal, but uh, that's because he's working at a Conservative radio station. He was a Labor supporter for all those years and he mm. swore black and blue he was Labor. Well, that's his personal choice, isn't it? Well, well, fair enough, and I'm a Labor supporter and I'm getting condemned for it, but I'm still an objective person. I don't just go one way with politics. I give credit where credit's due. Yeah, but you must stop whinging about what happens on other programs. It's boring, Chris. Yeah, but you, someone's got to listen, because when you ring the produ uh, production uh, program directors and that, they've got, a, they've got a, 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 a message bank and they never return the calls. 
Well, they're flat chat, and I can't speak for them. I've been thrown off Australia overnight because I suppose I, I took this to myself. How would you like to wait for three hours and 17 minutes and three hours and 52 minutes on hold? Well, I wouldn't do it. I'd, after 10 minutes or 20 minutes, I'd give it away, Chris. I've many respects to you, Phil. Look, I, I appreciate and I, I love it and appreciate you, Bruce, Phil. I hope that you know, you're, you're on for many years to come. I know that there's an age process where you're going to have to have special time in your privacy one day, and it'll be very very sad for me too. But uh, God bless and I look forward to probably doing something more constructive. And maybe tomorrow talk night. to you tomorrow night. All right, thank Chris, you. thank you very much indeed. 13 past 11. Roger at Caulfield. Yes, uh, good evening, Bruce and Phil. Hi, Roger. Uh, um, how are you? Oh, good. Uh, Chris is a spent record, may I say. Look, with all due respect to Chris, I know he's been through a hard time, but please, Chris, can you just stop doing this because you, you, you say that you got money and then you spend it on the pokies or you go and put it on the punt. You know, just, Chris, stop doing it, mate. Uh, we've all been there. We've done that. Yeah, you know what he should do? He should stop thinking about himself all the time, Roger. Well, ex well exactly right. I mean, there's, there's lots of people in the world, and this is not what I rang up for, and I'll get onto my topic, if I may, just shortly. Yes. Um, but, but Chris has got to realise that there's been many, many people in, in this great big country of ours that have, have gone through harder problems than, than Chris at Broadmeadows. And Chris at Broadmeadows doesn't rule the roost on 3AW. If he wants to, to, to wait three, three hours and 17 minutes, as you suggested, uh, Phil, if I was on the, uh, on the hold for 17 minutes, I'd hang up. And sure. I'll just go to bed and go to sleep yeah. and have a cup of coffee and, 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 and go to sleep. All right. What's the point you were going to make, Roger? Oh, St Stan Grant. Yes. Stan Grant. Well, he's a pop-up, a pop-up puppet, um, a puppet for the Indigenous people. When, when was the last time you heard of Stan Grant? He's been around for years, but all of a sudden he puts his hand up to the Indigenous, indigenous people and says, We've been treated with disrespect and, and this and that. Huh? Well, when was the last time you mm. heard of Stan Oh, Grant? he's been around for years on cable TV reading news from yes, Hong Kong. Yes, but he's entitled to do that, isn't he, Roger? Well, he, he's entitled to do it, right? But when was the last time you heard... Well, he's been in the, in, the, uh, uh, in the media circle for many, many years, yes. as, I, as uh, I would suggest... But but where was he last year? Uh, what, what, or no, the year before? No, let me tell you. No, that? he didn't disappear. He went to CNN News in Hong Kong for years and years. Uh, he hasn't just resurfaced. No, but in, in the, the yeah, in indigenous uh, the, the indigenous thing, he's popped his hand up and he said, "Oh, we're all racist and we're all this and we're all that." Where where, where, where did he say that last year or the year before? No, he didn't, did he? No, he and just... all of a sudden. He's just popped up and said it. Yeah, he's chosen Australia Day to do it, yes. Well, it's like Adam Goods does. I mean, mm -hmm. come on. I mean, look, honestly, and I'm just going to say it, and I'll get it out of my chest because I've had a gut full of this, right? Mm. I spent 21 years, 21 years in the Royal Australian Navy, right? Yes. And I, I, was, uh, I got out as a Chief Petty Officer. And I spent years and years and years at bloody sea, and I spent years and years at sea with Indigenous boys uh, and girls. Um, it, uh, um, it was my last six years, which were, you know, they were great people. And they didn't complain about this. Mm. They didn't go on about it. We're no. all we're all here together. Mm. For God's sake, if you don't, if you mm. don't. I mean, we just, you know, we're, we're Aussies, aren't we? For God's sake, if you don't want to, if you think we're all racist and we think we're all, you know, the white man did, did this and the white man, well, don't drive our cars. Don't smoke our cigarettes, don't drink our beer and don't catch our train. All right, Roger, you've made the point. Thank you for doing that, saying it for a month. Yeah, but I only have a, uh, an email address. I oh, don't well, have... Oh, we'll find out. I don't have a postal address. I don't have a phone well, number. Well, do your research and their homework. No. Oh. Yeah, it pays to join, doesn't it? And well, save 21% off electricity, 16% off gas, not just now, but forever. Mm, we'll just get going on it. OK, well, don't be a bully. I'll do it in my own time. You're all talk. You yeah. do it every night of the week. Perhaps I've got more important things to do. What? Oh, oh soup kitchens. Swimming with the dog in the Yarra. Probus. Probus. Uh, Veronica at Sunbury, good evening. Good evening, 
Whitney Houston film. Yes. Like, Hello, Veronica. It, uh, I just wanted to say what a fun, what a fun movie that um, um, Marigold Hotel was. Oh, uh, it was on tonight. Yes, it was on, on Channel 10 tonight. On, yes. um, and what the one, the first one, and it, what a fun film that is. If you feel as if you've been to India after watching it. Yes. <laughs> Anyway, lovely, to, lovely to hear um, Bert and Patty and and, um, and listen to your program. Thanks. Very yeah, much. And, and you know, there's a follow-up to that film. There is a sequel, Veronica. There are two I different films. Yeah, That's right. It okay. <laughs> means a double return ticket anywhere in Australia, flying Tiger Air. Fantastic, fantastic. Anywhere in Australia, where do you think you might go? Ah, uh, Broom. Broom. Yeah. Uh, well, we can get you to Perth at least. Maybe not to Broom on Tiger, but. Uh, We'll take care of you, and you can take someone with you, Veronica. Oh, thank you so much. Thank and then you go into the draw for the return airfares and a week's accommodation for a family at the Hotel McCure Bali Ligian. Ah, uh, thank you, Cupid. Thank you so much, Bert. Oh, well, thank you to Tiger Air, who fly direct from Melbourne to Bali daily starting the 23rd of March. And now take off from the brand-new Terminal 4 at Tullamarine. Well done, Veronica. Hang on, please. Okay. For heaven's sake, don't hang up. That's the contact with, uh, with Ken. Julianne and Pauline, good evening. Still there, Julianne? No, we might have lost her. Mary Ann is there. Hello, Mary Ann. Oh, hi, Bruce and Philip. Good day. Hello. I, I, um, hoping that Patty and, um, and Bert um, are still listening on their way home because I wanted to say congratulations. You know, that they've got now thank you to Laura and it's produced four lovely grandchildren for them. Yes. Particularly from such a small family. I think yes. it's wonderful. It's just, you know, fulfilled their life. Yeah. It's beautiful. And Roger that phoned a little while ago, uh, this is Stan Grant. Stan Grant's been doing a lot for the Indigenous people behind the scenes, Roger. He's, he, he's, he hasn't just sort of resurfaced. He's been doing a lot for them, uh, you know, behind the scenes for some time. You know? yeah, yeah, and obviously he chose Australia Day for his platform, yeah, you know. he did, and there's nothing really wrong with that either. I think it's, I don't think it's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. No, not at all. If Sahara is listening, as I tried to um, Google this art um, website, yeah. I can't find it. I was just curious to see what she puts on the art. Mm. art um, difference. It's yeah. art that difference, yes. What, what was it, sorry? We'll get her to spell it next time she phones oh, in, Mary Ann. Okay, thank, thank, thanks very much. Thank you, Marianne. Thank program. you very much. Paula and Glenroy. And good evening, Bruce and Phil. Hi. Thank you very much for the Christmas card. You're welcome. Thanks. Agrees. Would you think of taking the grandchildren to the grand parade? I'd like to very much. In fact, I might even do it. Mm, 11 o'clock in uh, the city. Chris of Doreen, good evening. Oh, hi, guys. How you going? Good I'm, the happy, I'm the happy Chris, not like the other Chris. Yeah, and, uh, thanks for calling. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I just want to tell you, you know, the cameo memorials you always talk about? Yes. Well, we used to walk home from school, uh, we were 12, 13, and walk past there, we lived in Faulkner, and saw a sign on the window, call in for a catalogue. So there we are, two little girls in their school uniform. Can we have a catalogue, please? Oh, <laughs> just... oh that's beautiful. Yes. And then uh, I must tell you, you know how they were talking about uh, Bert and Patty, and you're talking about tombstone things? Yes. I got one, I tore it out of the paper a while ago and it had, um, came in, walked about, didn't like it, walked out. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Yes, I like that one. Yeah, <laughs> you, Chris. Yes, okay, lovely chatting to you, have a great day tomorrow. Chris, 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 yes. Chris, 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 Chris. Yes. What about the Vitoki Mini Easy Cut Ham, would you like that? Oh, that would be awesome, thank you very much. Okay, then hang up, hold the line. Thank you, bye. Uh, hold on, Alan at Coolaroo. Hey, you going, guys? G'day, Alan. Oh, what a lovely um, time with Bert and Patty. Yes, I'm glad you heard it. Oh, it was fantastic. Yes. Unbelievable. Because, yeah. honestly, um, uh, I've come to bed early tonight because I've only had six hours sleep in the past 48 hours, so I'm going to try and get some mm. sleep. Have you been in pain, have you? Basically, yes, mm. which, which is, it doesn't matter. Well, it does. Like, like, like you say, it, my motto is, there's always somebody worse off. So yes, exactly. That, Very good, that's Alan. That's why yeah. I laugh it off. Yeah, you're a brave man, Alan. We admire you. 
Take care of yourself. Okay, Mario. Good evening, Mario. Good evening, gentlemen. How are yeah, you? welcome to, to Nightline. Thank you very much. I'd just like to make comment on um, Bert and Patty, how wonderful it was to listen to them. It, was, it, it seemed as though they were only on there for about 15 minutes. But, yes. Um, what happens was an hour, but just the chemistry. And it's, it's sad to think that um, we may uh, see other couples like that in, um, in television to, to come about. It, it may not ever happen again, unfortunately. But it was just so beautiful to listen to. Yeah, do you know why they're so special? They are real people, and it comes across, doesn't it? Yes, that's right. I mean, it, it feels like you just, I was there with you, listening to them, you know, with a cup of tea amongst you all. It, it, it sounded so real, you know. It was just yeah, weird. they're so down to earth, so natural. Yeah. Glad you enjoyed it, Mario. Oh, fantastic. You know what this means? You're anywhere in Australia from Tiger Air, anywhere what? in Australia. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. What can I say? Where do you think? Thank you very uh, uh, perhaps Perth. Oh, why not? Yes, they fly to Perth for the new terminal for a Tullamarine. And you're also in the draw for the major prize, return airfares and a week's accommodation for a family at the Hotel McCure Bali Legion. Thanks to Tiger Air, who fly direct from Melbourne to Bali daily starting the 23rd of March. Well done, uh, Mario. Thank you very much. And hang on for Ken, if you will. Uh, don't hang up for heaven's sake, Mario. We need your destination. And thank you, Tiger Air. And uh, we'll do it again tomorrow night and every night this week. Uh, James of Mini Ponds. Uh, hello, boys. Good to hear your voice, James. Look, I've had, you've had a couple of callers uh, say the same thing that I'm thinking. You know, Bert and Patty are just so fantastic. You, you guys, the four of you, you should do a stage act. You've got about 200 years of experience mm -hmm. between you. Yes. That's this. Especially you three men, of course, Patty's much younger, mm. but uh, all together, you know, it's about 200 years of on stage and uh, radio and uh, yes. uh, television, you know, it, it, uh, lovely anecdotes. Oh, uh, great, thank you, yeah, we, could, we could go on the road, couldn't we, James? Oh. You could, yeah, now Bert pulls them out of the sky and you guys back them up and mm. then uh, Bruce uh, does his great doodles in the background. Ah. You should, you should have those up on the screen at the back. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, like uh, doodle, doodle as you go, and uh, Paddy comes up with some terrific anecdotes about the grandchildren. Mm. It's just like a great family. And show. I, 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 could, I could do Pet's Corner, oh, maybe. Yeah. Hmm? All right, James, thank you so much. 25 to 12, 22 minutes to midnight, a low of 16 degrees overnight, uh, warm tomorrow, top of 28. Oh, it sounds good to me, Bruce. Uh, Craig at Mornington, good evening. Good evening, gentlemen. Can you hear me clearly so I go off hand three? And you're fine. And uh, what's on your mind? Okay. Look, you know, I, I, I'm the toy man that I've spoken to you over many years. I always have fun anecdotes with you both. Um, um, now, mate, I speak on behalf of 90% of the working class of fellow Australians, any race, colour or creed. Uh, I work two jobs, seven days a week, uh, close to 10 to 12 hours every day. I'm, a, I'm not self quoting here. I'm... I'm Painting a picture. I've got three points to make tonight. Um, and in reverse order from negative to right up to positive. First of all, dear Chris at Broad Meadows, Chris, we all love and admire in that, but you are very self obsessed. And I say this because I've told the, you guys in the past that I've been everywhere you have, and now I'm happily married, got a wife, two beautiful daughters. My mate stuck with me when I went through my depression. And the one thing that pulled me out of the stoop was one day one of my big mates, like a Steve Irwin character, said, Come on, mate, that's it. Get in the car. Where are we going? Royal Children's Hospital. Chris, if you feel so down about yourself and complaining about the world, either do something about it. You've been on government services for a long time now. And um, I've heard you whinge about the train doesn't stop long enough in Southern Cross Station for you to get off and have a cigarette. For God's sake, mate, there's 800,000 Victorians travelling to work every day, and you want them all to stop and wait while you have a cigarette, where have you got to go in a hurry? So please, mate, think of others, and a truly generous person tell them so what he's done. All right, Thank okay, you. thank you for your comments and uh, your opinion, Craig. Thank you. Uh, Judy at Taylor's Lakes. Hi, Judy, what's news? Judy? Got a few dropouts here. Ruth in South Melbourne. Hello, Ruth. Hello, boys. Hi, boys. I just want to keep it on the positive. I'm not qualified to judge Chris of Broadmeadows. I didn't do any of the 
psycho psychological studies or any of that, I won't pug pass judgment on, on him. Similarly, I will not bag someone like uh, Stan Grant or Adam Goods. Of course, they have opinions about their own people. I would just like to say, let's all be a little bit more positive and a little bit more tolerant. Mm. And unfortunately with Chris, yes, he's got his problems, so let's lead by example, not bag the man, just lead by example, and let's just all go forward and be tolerant, is all I ask of fellow Australians. All right, well said, Ruth, thank you. All right, and a lovely night, and I love Bert and Patty. Oh, they're I love gorgeous, you both. gorgeous. And uh, to have lived in an era with, with people like you, I'm grateful to God every day. Oh, you're lovely. Thank you so much. Oh, that's I mean, a that lovely sentiment. Ruth, we might, uh, we might organise a Bataki mini Easy Cut Ham for you. All right? I'd love it, my dear. Wouldn't that Thank be good? You. All right, don't Thank hang up. You, darling. Don't hang up, Pam, and say hold on. Peter, good evening. Good evening, fellas. Yes, Pete. In regards to that caller that said before, Roger, that we're having, having a go at Chris. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know whether you realise, Phil, but that's actually Rod, who used to give you grief in regards to adopting a greyhound. Yeah, yeah I'm aware he changes his name and suburb. Yeah, yeah, he's had that many lives and that many occupations. He's a miracle man. He's been lucky to you uh, that he spent 13 years in the air force. Last night he told Luke he was a, a um, he worked uh, somewhere else for 13 years as a nurse. Well, I think he, one night he a, told us he'd been in jail. Well, well, that's where he should be. He's been a paramedic. He knows all about ice. But well, I, I just can't believe that guy. He told Tom Elliott he was an F-111 pilot, and uh, he's got the cheek to have a go at Chris. And Chris has got the problem. I think that Rod is his name or whatever. Mm. Actually, he even mentioned that he was at. At uh, Swanson Street and, and uh, Flinders Street, when Ronald Ryan was shot, well, yeah. he's been everywhere. I think, fr I, I think from tomorrow night we might stop digging into each other and have a, a bit of a free for all, a bit of fun. All right? Yeah, I, I th we seem think... to be digging and, and and finding fault with each other. Yeah, and and the philosophy of Nightline is to lighten up. Uh, and that isn't really Nightline. It's it's a bit of escapism, a bit of fun, a few laughs. Yes. Okay, Amanda at Heidelberg. Hello, Bruce and Phil. Hi. How are you? Good day. <laughs> I don't know what classifies as a regular call, but I've been listening to you for quite a few months now and ringing in now and then, and I just wanted to wish you both a very wonderful day for Australia Day and to everybody that's listening, despite the controversies and contradictions and everything, I still think we live in a champion country and this is Australia and we're standing in it. <laughs> yes, that's right. So I just wanted to wish everyone a happy Australia Day. That's lovely, very positive. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you. Hold on, Amanda, we're going to you a pancake parlour voucher. Oh, my God. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. The pa the pa hey, thank you. Uh, all right, just hold on. Yeah. The pancake... Okay. Hang on. Pancake parlour open 24 hours at High Point, Doncaster and Malvern East. So don't hang up. Please hold the line. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, to Grant at court to 12. Yes, good evening, guys. How yes, Grant. Good day. Lovely to hear voices on the radio. Thank you. Fantastic every night. I thoroughly enjoy it. Thank you. Just wondering whether I'm late for I'm a Tiger. Oh, yeah, yeah. you oh, have yes. to wait for us to play but the tune. Both have gone. Both have gone till tomorrow night. Oh, okay then. I'll try tomorrow night, yeah. guys. Okay. Good, good luck. Thank you. All right. Enid's in Footscray, an old pal of ours. Hello, Enid. How are you? <laughs> have a lovely day tomorrow, whatever you're doing. Thank you. Whether you're having a picnic or spending it at home. Well, well it's very special for us because both Bruce and I are ambassadors of Australia Day, so uh, yep. we're very involved. Uh, I'll try to get through tomorrow night. I've, got, I've had a busy day today and I've had a while trying to get through tonight. Yes. Um, but anyhow, I'll be at the town hall in the morning from 9 till 12. They'll be doing the Civic Awards and mm -hmm. Citizen of the Year and all that. Yes. But they'll be home in the afternoon, so hopefully I can get through to you in the night. Cause yes! I've been, I've been cooking today to get ready for tomorrow night. Good. <laughs> so hopefully I can, but have a wonderful day. Well, enjoy the ceremony at the Melbourne Town Hall in the morning, and then oh. perhaps uh, make your way down to uh, Federation Square in the afternoon. Oh, 
Well, I'm down at Footscray Town Hall, though. That's oh, I see. Oh, you'll, you'll be in the suburbs. OK. <laughs> yes, yeah, so uh, I'll get home after it's all over and done when we then have a quieter afternoon. Yes. Well, there's no doubt about it. You really throw yourselves into everything you do, and uh, we appreciate it, uh, Enid. Peter, good evening. Good night, fellas. G'day, Peter. You're on uh, Nightline. Yeah, just having a cruise in tonight. I just thought I'd ring in and tell you that um, what I'm doing tomorrow, I'm going down. My daughter's down in uh, Germana, and she's going in a fun run from Germana to Rosebud. Oh, I'll good. Be, and I'll be down there. I'm going to pick up my little grandson off her and um, have a well of a time. And then and then uh, um, evening at 5 o'clock, uh, I think I'll be going down to see down at Roy, where I live down Pete Smith will be doing a speech, and uh, yeah. yeah, just going to have a great night. Yeah, great day. Yeah, yeah, you deserve oh, that. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, thanks for sharing that. Ring us tomorrow night. Tell that's us a, how. A, a great day. Tell Can't us how it went. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, by the way, I want to apologise to the people of South Barang, who were hopeful tomorrow night that I'd be unfurling the flag and making a speech for Australia Day and planting a tree. Well, why? What's happened? Uh, I can't be there, why? sadly. Because I'll be here. I'm double booked. Uh, they wanted me at 8.30, well, 9 o'clock. We'll have lunchtime and go at, They don't want me then. There'll be no one there to see me. Oh, there will. No, it's an after-dark activity. There'll be some authorans. they hanging around like a bad smell. Sorry, folks. I'm sure you'll get over it. Oh, they'll be I there. They'll be there. Be don't here. disappoint them, for heaven's sake. I have to be here to support Bruce don't like Don't disappoint a, them. have to be here like a crutch don't for you. Don't disappoint them. No, you be there. I can't leave you on your own. No, of course you can. Oh, no, I wouldn't do well, it to you. leave them on their own. No, well, I am. What are you doing? Maybe next year, folks. Taking two bob each way. You can't afford to do it. Do it during the day, not at night. Oh, I've got that paperwork you got me to fill in for your nomination for Australian of the Year. Oh, yeah. thanks, Ken. I've just filled in here that you're unfurling flags. Well, that, hang on, I've got to cross that off. Yeah, yeah I can't do it. Gee, that's Gee, bad. What about a Queen's birthday on her in no, June? That's no, well, I'll be there, but I can't be there. Yeah, well, I'm just uh, apologising to the people of South Morang. They must be disappointed. Of course they are. Have a look mm. here. Senior of the... Oh, hang on. Community service, unfurling... Fl no, hang on. Mm. Cross that out. Yeah. Oh, gee, sorry. That's not looking good. No, but I do my share behind the scenes. Oh, what? Well, <laughs> Excuse me. be the first to tell me, and then I'll, then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll uh, back you. Buddy, I'd rather remain Mr. Anonymous. No, don't. No, You've I'd, been anonymous I'd, all your life. You've done talk, nothing. Can't talk about my good deeds. You've done nothing. There isn't enough time. Hey, we have time for maybe two more calls. When does your probus work start too? Uh, my next probus talk is in October. Where can we see you? Uh, Grand Iris, I believe, in October. Like to come along, Bruce? It's ten months away. Yes, I know. Lazy hell. Sorry, my diary is full. Uh, one more call. Nothing to do all maybe. day. Nothing. Yeah, I have to walk the dog. Oh, rot. Flush the bird. Yeah, flush yourself. Oh, yes. Nine six nine hundred six nine three. Time for maybe one, maybe two more calls. Oh, you're lucky. But you'll have to be quick. Um, and now David Morrison, of course, the Australian of the Year, popular choice, I imagine, with the, uh, his army background. Uh, but if it hadn't been David, who would you like to have seen named as Australian of the Year? Tomorrow's weather: low of sixteen degrees, a high of twenty-eight. A warm day forecast for Australia Day. I missed out on the news. Can you tell me who is the Victorian of the Year, please? Exactly. Yep. Uh, his name or her name? Watch the news. No, I be didn't get it. Sorry, you can't do talk radio sorry. without some sort of backup. Sorry, I was having a cigarette. Oh yes, yeah, that's your whole life. Kyra, good evening. All right, Bruce and Bill, happy Australia Day for tomorrow, boys. Yeah, you two and to your family. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Bruce, uh, Dakota starts school this week on Thursday. Oh, now. lovely. Yeah, yeah, she starts school and. Uh, yeah, you know, running around today, getting a few odd, few uh, little things for mm. her, you know. How exciting for you, yes. Yeah. Uh, will be, it will be. Bruce, I've got uh, the photo in, got the uh, film for the camera to... Uh, yes, you need that, you today. need that, yes. It's going to be very hard for me, Bruce, because, you know, I've raised her since Becky Park. I know. And, uh, you know, well, you know, when she's in her own... In a uniform, I think, too, I've done a good job with the her. The darling it? thing, yeah. yeah. But she'll, be, she'll be home every day after three. Yes, but the uniform, yeah. there's emotion there. Yeah. And how are your grandchildren going, Bruce? Oh, well, they're all going back uh, when uh, when your little girl go, goes back. Thursday, Friday. Yeah. yeah. yeah we're thinking of yeah. Dakota. I hope she does well, Okay, Kyra. Kyra. A few lines called aging. Any woman can have the body of a 21-year-old as long as she buys him a few drinks first. My memory is not as sharp as it used to be. Also, my memory is not as sharp as it used to be. 
Know how to prevent sagging? Just eat till the wrinkles fill out. I've still got it, but nobody wants to see it. I'm getting into swing dancing, not on purpose. Some parts of my body are just prone to swinging. It's scary when you start making the same noises as your coffee maker. People our age can still enjoy an active, passionate sex life, providing we get cable or that dish thing. <laughs> the good news is that even as we get older, guys still look at our boobs. The bad news is that they have to squat down first. <laughs> These days, about half the stuff in my shopping trolley says, for fast relief. <laughs> I've tried to find a suitable exercise video for women my age, but they haven't made one called Buns of Putty. <laughs> Don't think of it as getting hot flashes and hot flushes. Think of it as your inner child playing with matches. Don't let aging get you down. It's too hard to get back up. Copyright restricts distribution of this piece by any means of duplication. Thank you to Bert and Patty for making it a very memorable nightline. Yeah, it's such a surprise they came in unexpectedly and was it fun. Luke Bonner is here to open up the lines for Australia overnight after midnight. Have a wonderful Australia Day, Ambassador. Yes, you too up there in Merbu North. Mm, well, I'm supposed to be in South Morang. That's but right. See him at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Can't make it. I'll be here, uh, you know, preparing for nightlife. You're double booked. You try and be everything to everyone yeah. and nothing to no one. Folks, I'll try and be there in a year's time. What I'm, a total failure. I wonder who's replacing me. I wonder who, who's filling in for me there. You stand Grant. Good night, Samuel, Carter, Amelia and Emily, Charlotte, Sweet Ella Grace, Little William Oliver and Sophia Grace. I'm Bruce Mansfield. And I'm Philip Brady, thinking of the sick, the sad, uh, the lonely. And the uh, bereft up in Merbu North. And the homeless, the With helpless. nothing going for them. Yes, I know you'll have Just a sleep Just the promise of a liar. Yeah, never a liar, oh, no. Oh, yes. Buddy, your mate is double booked. That's the way she went today. <laughs>